Hello world, and welcome back to a very special episode of Minecraft Memoir. This is episode 50. In the last episode, we did a bunch of cleaning up of the world to get ready for our world tour. In between episodes, uh, I had a lot of stuff going on, and I continued working on the world here. And for today's episode, we will be doing the world tour. I am so excited to show my world off. Uh, I've made a bunch of developments off camera. Uh, there's also some stuff I just generally want to talk about. Um, so yeah, uh, this is my first world tour. So I'm not 100% uh, sure how this is supposed to go. I'm going to do my best, but I'm sure I'm going to forget something. I apologize. Uh, I'll talk about it more at the end of the episode, but I implore you to download this world for yourself and explore it. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of stuff that I don't show on purpose um, for you to find and enjoy for yourself. So, to start off our world tour here, let's look at the biggest build in our world, or maybe not the biggest, but I think the tallest, our spawn tower. I've done a bunch of building in here, off camera. Uh, it's not finished by all means. I'm going to mention the things that aren't finished and what needs to be done on them, um, just so you know, like, you know, what things are and aren't a final stage. Uh, I really like the gloomy look in here. Nothing can spawn since there's slabs everywhere and torches are uh, perfectly spaced so that, like, nothing is at a 7 or below light level. Uh, and it's really tall and gloomy. I really love this feel. Um, I'm going to put some chains, I think, or, you know, something that could look like a chain in here, hanging from the ceiling. And I'd like to remove some of the light in this little ring there. Uh, but I thought I might use that little indent, so I need torches up there right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty empty room. If you go down here, you can see the basement. Uh, this is obviously not finished yet. Uh, I don't actually think this will be included in the final build, but this is where I store my extra items, if I have any. Yeah. Oh, actually, I've got a lot of iron in there. Um, so there's just some random stuff down here. This goes uh, out into, like, this area that also wasn't filled in. Uh, so I figured if I ever needed to get in there, there's a door. And then it's pretty sparse in here. So there's a door leading outside. Um, I'll show you that. This leads to the exterior. Uh, I was going to put some signs around that, like, I don't know, establish some lore, maybe the names of locations in my world. Uh, and I was thinking of putting one here, but ultimately decided against it. Um, having a random sign just didn't make this whole area look that good. Um, so, I'll probably show off the exterior a bit more as we get farther away, um, but I at least wanted to show you where this door led to. I used the half-door cactus glitch to put some iron doors on the edges here, and I think it's really nice. Adds just a little something. Uh, yeah, so let's go back in. So, okay, we have a giant tower. Uh, how do you get up? Well, here's a drop shoot down. So that must mean that this is the stairwell up. It's not really a stairwell. It is a minecart elevator. So you just hold right click and you make your way up to the top. So this is the top of the tower. Also not finished. You can see the dirt on the walls. Uh, that's eventually going to be glowstone, but I just didn't have enough to use. And since uh, up here isn't really finished, I might actually um, change these walls. So. Dirt is good for now. Uh, these are some spare chests. Actually, I was going to put these items into those ones and remove these chests. I kind of forgot. Uh, and then this chest has all of our extra minecarts. At some point, I'd like to do an auto minecart loader here, um, or have a system where they're just constantly cycling through. Uh, I didn't build that yet, because obviously if this isn't finished, um, no mechanics are going to be done either. So for now, all of our chests are in, or all of our minecarts are in this chest. Um, there's four separate doorways here. Only one of them leads out uh, to an actual solid object. 
Uh, at some point in the future, I think I'd like to make viaducts going in the three other directions. Uh, but it required so many resources that I'm not going to do it anytime soon. This one, it took me days. I actually stopped my series at one point because of how long this was taking me. So let's do a little backup here. Show you the top of the spawn tower. Uh, I haven't done anything to it. I think my uh, frequent viewers have probably already seen this in this form. At some point, I'll do some weathering, maybe some signs. Um, but as it is now, I like how it looks. And it fits really well with the block palette I've got here. Um, really, it's just smooth stone slabs, cobblestone, and regular stone. Uh, and then a little obsidian down there. So I'd like to give a little background on this world um, before I get too far into the tour here. So I started this world on February 15th of 2020. I think I started my channel on the same day. Um, in a previous video, I said February of 2022. That was wrong. I meant 2020. It was about a month before COVID hit. Uh, I was really bored and um, I was in a weird spot in my life. And so I was like, you know what, with this new computer that at the time I had pretty much just built, uh, let's finally record some Minecraft videos. I've been thinking about it since I was like 12, and now I finally have the capability to do it. Uh, so yeah, this world is, as such, over three years old. Um, I'm really proud of that. Honestly, I don't like to flex too much, but I do think it's really cool that I made my world before COVID. Um, recently, there has been an uptick in the amount of people who, you know, play Minecraft and make Minecraft videos. Uh, and you can tell that a lot of it was during COVID. Like a lot of the world tours you see are like two years old, you know, it was right in the middle of the pandemic that people started their worlds. Uh, but I started it before then, so I am really cool. <laughs> I don't actually think that, uh, but I do think it's really novel. So I'm trying to give you a better view here of my spawn tower. Uh, I started building this guy within the first, I think, what, 15 episodes of my world? Um, I'm actually checking my series on the side here. No, episode 24 is when I started. Um, so that was a while ago. That was probably like just under two years ago that I started this guy. Uh, and I think this is easily the most regal build in my world. Uh, you can see it's got, I think, one, two, three, four, five arches. Uh, and then it starts kind of crumbling off as you go further ahead. So this is the beach that we built up in episode 26, I believe. Uh, and I've done a little bit of terraforming here. I think we left it as just all flat, and I didn't like that. So in between episodes, I built it up a little bit, made it look like an actual beach. Uh, you can see what I mean. Here's a broken pillar. It looks like it broke right off of that support there. So a bit of evidence to show that this viaduct and the spawn tower are a lot older uh, than you might think in the game, in the lore, of course. <laughs> um, in my mind, some ancient kingdom built the viaduct and the spawn tower. And you can tell because it's giant and old and stone. Um, but stuff that I've built in lore is more wood and smaller. So I built this um, because I came across this giant ruin and I wanted to use it. Especially considering how, strangely, any time I lose my life, I respawn at the bottom of that tower. Very weird. It must have been a religious thing for the ancient kingdom. So, going further here, you can see the bridgeway I've built. Um, this is kind of modeled after uh, those bridges that you see in the Midwest. It doesn't actually have any, like, cross beams in it, so it wouldn't be really sturdy in real life. Uh, but I just didn't want to do those. They didn't come out really good with these fence. I might in the future, or I might make, you know, more uh, horizontal connectors here. But as it is now, I think it looks pretty good. 
you can see how it kind of widens out at the base here um, to hold the whole thing up. Over in that direction is the first of the three lighthouses we built. Um, we'll get closer in a sec here, but I've got some other things to show. Uh, so heading in this direction, these are the... Dang, loud animals. Uh, these are the giant cliffs that you pass by when you ride the viaduct. I might show those uh, later on, might, maybe at the end, but they're really pretty. I like those in the distance. And as you get closer to them, um, there's a ruin at the base. A lot of the ruins that I've built, uh, you know, at some point they might have like some lore-centric reason to existing. But as it is now, a lot of them I built just because they looked cool um, and there was a good spot for them. I really want to fill this world with a lot of ruins. Um, for those of you who haven't seen this series, like I said, it's been going on for over three years now, uh, and I plan to keep it going for about a decade. Uh, I think we'll probably go for maybe 10 years, and then we'll see where we're at then. But as such, I'm planning on playing in this world a lot. So I'm kind of thinking it as I build my own ruins, and I'm not like expanding a whole lot in this world. I'm not exploring. I'm really focusing on building in the areas I've already generated. Uh, so, in the future, when I end up building in these areas again, then I'll have ruins to kind of fill out my world. And it's really like they're my own ruins, because they're so old to me, and, you know, in the lore, they're kind of old. So, I think it's really cool. Uh, I'm, like, kind of building over my own ruins. So, this is like a little flat shrine. Uh, the cool thing about this is that I built it on a diagonal a little bit. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Down here, I think this was supposed to be a well or something. I showed off there's like a little secret chest there. Oh, that is important. Yes. So secret chests. Scattered around this world, there are a bunch of secret chests. And these are what they look like. They are the glitched triple chests uh, that can only really be made in these old versions. They can stick around for a while, so I'm planning on just hiding them uh, around the world here until we can no longer make triple chests. And that's going to be a sort of point system uh, for people who download the world. If you're feeling really motivated, try to find these triple chests. I do not remember where they all are, uh, so I can't give you a maximum point count, unfortunately. But each point is one gold block. Uh, that's just because gold isn't terribly useful in most versions of Minecraft. Uh, so I was thinking I might make gold clocks out of them, or just regular clocks. Uh, but I figured, you know, I'd leave as raw gold, because clocks aren't really useful either. Um, so this is just an example, actually. I guess I should take it back. But yeah, try to look for these. You'll find them in very strange spots. I'm trying not to look at them if I know where I've placed some. Ooh, I need to get rid of that piece of dirt. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to look at them, though. I want them to uh, be a little bit of a secret for y'all. So, uh, after this little, you know, sloping down bridge, uh, the theme kind of changes a little bit, the style changes, into this flat bridge here. Sir, I'm recording. Goodbye. <laughs> it turns into this flat bridge here. You can see it actually uses um, some of the old supports from the ancient viaduct uh, to kind of latch onto. So coming on top of the viaduct, uh, in the last episode we got rid of all of the unnecessary boosters. I didn't end up building uh, anything on top here. I was going to try to put some grass and, you know, maybe some little statues or whatever, but that never materialized. I'll probably do it at some point in the future. Um, but there is one booster that I left, so let's make our way towards it. I wanted to show, though, yeah, these are those cliffs. They look gorgeous. Of course, there's some clouds in the way, but uh, I think in the future, I might want to put something on top of them. Or, I was looking, I might want to develop this little area here. Uh, because this view is just gorgeous, and it would be awesome to see some stuff below. 
Uh, so yeah, I left this one booster here so that I can boost my way to the spawn tower, or just that way, uh, if I want. But there's a bridge, nope, a ladder, yes, that goes uh, from the foot of this here all the way up, just in case you fall through. Um, because if you get off your minecart on the viaduct, you'll fall through uh, because the blocks haven't been doubled up. I'll do that at some point, but until then, pretty handy. So let's make our way forward. I, I love this view, this sloping down. Every time I die, I, I have to like make sure I don't record this too many times because I really like seeing it, but I'm sure you've probably seen it a whole bunch. Uh, so to the left here is an old stone relic, and to the right is, I guess, a different old stone relic. Uh, so let's check out both of them. I figured since it's nighttime, I'll probably show the lighthouse first, so you'll get the whole visual effect. Um, as we rode down, you probably noticed the lava is very visible uh, from basically everywhere around, so I'm glad I chose that as a light source. I was thinking I'd do glowstone at some point, but um, I don't know, it was just going to be too expensive, and I don't actually think it would have looked much better. So coming over... Uh, I did kind of clean up this area, got rid of, I think, the chest that I had there. Um, and I think I improved the interior a little bit. But ultimately, it's pretty empty. I will have to fill this with something in the future, but I just haven't. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to interiors. It's also really hard in these older versions to make meaningful interiors. I was having a conversation about this earlier. You really just have to, like place down random blocks and then tell your viewers, oh no, that's a chair. This isn't a chair. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Maybe a little table? But yeah, it doesn't look like a table. But after I tell you, you're kind of like, oh yeah, I guess I could see that. So, uh, you know, that's, that's how most of our interiors are going to be until we get into future versions where we can place more blocks. Uh, and then yes, the lava runs down and makes that little lava channel in the middle down there. And then up here, ooh, a little bit of lore, a little bit of lore. I forgot I placed that sign. Uh, and nothing else. I was heading towards the other build, but I forgot to show something. Uh, so I mentioned that I did a lot of building off camera for this world tour. It kind of worked out that in episode 49, uh, we did a lot of path building, you know, cleaning up major builds. Uh, and then I left everything else for off-camera. And also, while I was off-camera, uh, I got a few suggestions from other viewers. So, this suggestion, shout out to Jovial Jam, was to remove this one wide cobble bridge over this, like, one high body of water. Uh, remove it and replace it with, like, a natural bridge made out of debris, like, you know, trees and logs, stuff that would be found in water. I think that's an awesome idea, and I plan to do it. I just kind of forgot. <laughs> there was a lot of other stuff uh, I had to check over, and that was the one thing, really, that I forgot to rebuild. So I apologize. I do think that's an awesome idea, and I will do it. Uh, the way it worked out, it was pretty funny. So after episode 49, off-camera, I opened Photoshop, and I got a printout of my world here. And I just circled everything that I had kind of built up. Uh, and then I visited every single one of those locations and confirmed that it was to my liking. And I put a little check on it in Photoshop before moving on to a different area. And I made sure every area had a check before I was like, yep, we can record. Uh, but obviously I forgot that bridge over there. So I apologize. Um, but yes, this other relic here. So... I believe I've identi identified it in a video, uh, but this is a giant stone head in hands. I don't know if I've really built up the lore for them, um, but, or again, on camera, I don't know if I've built up that lore, but the idea is that these guys were used by the ancient kingdom um, to potentially do building, potentially for war. We don't really know, but we can 
be pretty confident that it's the same age as the uh, viaduct in the you know spawn tower so that is a hand upside down you can see the thumb there and this is the back of the hand and it appears that a large oak tree has sprung forth from the underside of the hand very interesting going down this way i'm pretty proud of these light posts um they, they obviously don't have any lore uh but i think they look good and then heading towards this it looks like the other stone hand um, but this time it is palm faced up and you can see that again another large oak tree has grown from the palm very interesting i wonder why and then finally here is the stone head it's got some glowstone eyes i wonder if it's still alive if it was ever uh, regardless though it seems that locals have turned this into a spot of leisure Wait, yeah spot of leisure <laughs> little campfire some seating uh, it's a nice little beach here too looks like there's some seats very nice and then heading off in this direction there's a broken bridge hmm Ooh, let's walk around it yeah it looks like the pathway keeps going over here oh interesting looks like there's a lot more trees over here and they're a lot bigger too i wonder why I wonder what this object is at all getting back on track uh get it because we're okay <laughs> Uh, we are heading towards the first booster hut here. I don't think this is actually the first one. I believe the first one I made is the closest to our base. But this is the first one in the tour. Uh, and actually, I think this is my favorite. All the other ones have, like, stuff I still need to build for them. Uh, you'll see those later on. But this one, I think, is the only one that's finished, standalone. Uh, and it looks really good. You know, all things considered, this is an alpha build. Uh, and I really like it. There's like a window there, and there's like a big hopper there. So the idea is that fuel is dropped in through that window into the hopper for, I guess, the minecarts. Uh, I do want to build something here in the future that looks like a resource harvesting area, and then some sort of machine or like conveyor belt to make it look like, you know, something is actually putting fuel in there. But otherwise, I think this is a really pretty building. I spent a while on it. I made a little pond, so that's cute. Um, I just wanted there to be something nice as you're kind of going by here. Of course, it's going nighttime, and I'm probably heading into the most dangerous spot of my world. Uh, these, like, pillars, this pillar field, I never really named it. Uh, this isn't really important. I don't remember when I made these, but mostly uh, they were just to add some visual interest. As you can see, my minecart track is pretty much straight from my spawn tower uh, going this way. And then right there is a corner and it heads off towards my base. Uh, so every time I was running this way from my base, I was just looking at this bare field and I wanted it to look a little nicer. So I built up these towers. Uh, I didn't really put a lot in them. Some of them have stuff, so I encourage you to uh, go look at them, but they're not the most important thing out here. <laughs> I know this isn't the most important thing for a world tour, uh, but I also wanted to point out, I finally put these fence on this bridge here. Uh, I never did that when I first built it, and it just looked really bare, kind of bad. Uh, so I did that in between episodes, and it ended up being like over eight stacks of fence uh, almost definitely why i never did it but i think it looks really good now and coming over this way i wanted to show uh, this is one of the boosters on my rail line there's actually two of them one going in each direction uh, all of the other booster huts around are covering one of these guys and that's that mobs don't get in and they don't get in these minecarts because it just kind of messes it up this one is left bare because at some point I want to build like a station here. You know, it'll go different directions. Um, it'll look nice. I just haven't built it yet because that'll probably be a big thing in the future. 
Uh, so heading towards our next booster hut, this is one that had some issues with corrupted chunks. Uh, at some point in the series, I don't remember which episodes, but there have been two instances where this world has gotten corrupted. And uh, the first time it got corrupted, this chunk here, that is, you know, very clearly a chunk that is not uh, correct. And this chunk here underneath this uh, hut were deleted. And then the second crash regenerated this chunk, but not this one. Uh, so I kind of cleaned it up. I left this kind of as is. I just put a little dirt around. Um, but I think this is really cool how like this booster hut has gone through uh, multiple iterations because of those corruptions. This is the one that has a big water wheel on it. I was thinking I'd try to improve this before um, the world tour, but I'll do that later. I still think it looks really good as is. Uh, the idea is that, you know, this is a water wheel. There's like little paddles here to catch water. It'll spin that way. And then if you go inside, it's connected by some gears, you know, there's a smaller one than that one, and it goes in. And then yeah, inside, I guess in theory, it's powering this furnace. I'm not really sure though. <laughs> uh, I need to build like a reservoir and actually make water flow onto this wheel though, as well as build up this whole area. Uh, but again, there have been some corruptions, so I think that's good enough for now. Uh, this thing here, it was going to be just some random old stone structure. Uh, and I had it go... I'm not really sure why this is here. I had it go like across that way. Uh, but these supports were just too small. And the like bridge that I had to go across was way too long. So I just got rid of it. Half of it actually got deleted because of that corruption. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know if I'll end up rebuilding that, but that's what that is. And then this hut here, this actually was the booster hut with the water wheel. And then I realized it didn't make sense. Um, there was this faucet here, and then it was flowing over top the water wheel that was right next to it. It just didn't make sense pumping up water to then drop it onto a water wheel to generate power, I guess. Uh, so that's why I moved that over there. Instead, this is just a regular booster hut, uh, and then I left the faucet and made a little pond. I think this looks really cute. At some point, there's empty space under this land here. Uh, I want to build a little troll that lives under our bridge. So from this point on, we're really getting into the official territory of my base. Uh, I've described this to my viewers in the past. But the general idea with this series is that I'm going to develop an area um, in any given version. And then when I'm kind of done with it, when I'm bored and I don't really know what to build next, I'm just going to move on. Uh, I'll leave all of this, you know, I'll stay in the same world and I'll just move somewhere else. Um, and as I update versions in the game, hopefully that'll add more blocks. So each new area will look significantly different from the last. Uh, so this is our like alpha early beta area. You can tell very limited block palette, basically all just stone and wood uh, and a little bit of brick. But yeah, so <laughs> you, you've probably noticed that in all the other builds too, because all of the other builds have still been in early alpha. I just want to point out this really nice bridge that I made. Maybe it's not really nice, but it's pretty okay. Uh, and then this is just kind of like a temporary bridge I made to get over to the windmill here. This is one of the first builds I made in this world. My plans were to make a lot of windmills around here. Because this looks like a great area to make just like a valley of windmills. And I still might build some more of these. You know, maybe I'll build one over there or something. Uh, but that really never materialized. So this is kind of our only windmill. It's also a little shorter than I wanted it to be, uh, but let's go inside. I think it looks pretty nice though. I think it holds up. Um, since this was one of our first builds, 
I think I've developed as a builder a lot since then. Um, so I could probably improve this area. But, you know, all in all, I think it's all right. And then that goes up to the cap. Uh, so you can stand out here. See the windmill blades? I think that's pretty cool. I really like how this actual fan turned out. Uh, and I put pressure plates and everything. So I guess, you know, I was probably thinking while I was building. So heading in this direction, um, we can either go right, up, or forwards. And we're going to go forward here. We're going to loop around through our base and make our way back up. Uh, a few notes about this base. This is actually the second one we've made. Um, the first one wasn't all that much. It's off in that direction. It's a little, like, hill. I might make my way over there uh, in this tour, but if I don't, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff there, but, you know, some points of interest. Uh, now, this addition is actually a later bit I put on this base. Uh, once I figured out the rails, I started at the spawn and then made my way here. So this is like a hallway uh, for the railways. And then this is a door to get into like my storage room. I'll show that in a sec. Uh, I also threw these paintings up. I think they look nice. I put a lot of paintings up in between uh, 49 and this episode. So I hope it's not too many. I think these are kind of cool. Like, you know, there's not really much in this hallway anyway. Uh, so yeah, now we're getting into the main portion of the base. Um, you know, that was an addition, but all of this stuff was really original to this base. Uh, so I'll show the chest room in a sec, but I think we'll go over here first. So I also cleaned up this room. Uh, I, I'm not really good at interiors, so I did my best here, but, um, you know, a lot of walls are just like a single picture. Uh, I made this little nook here. I think this looks cute. Nice little seating area. Um, one of my viewers, Dark Rain One Two Six, I believe, uh, they made a TV room in their world, and I was thinking about that, but I don't know if I want there to be like that level of tech in this house. Uh, so I don't know if I'll put like a TV, but it's a good idea especially because there's very few things you can do in this version. Uh, so, you know, I might as well <laughs> do as much as I can. I put a little table in here, put a little shelf there, a picture. Uh, so now coming out this way, I built this area uh, a while ago too. I mean, I'm going to say that for everything, but I did build a lot of this um, a really long time ago. Uh, and I really like this little pond. I, I don't really come out this way a whole lot, but I made this little stream. I made that waterfall. There's a lake up there I'll show you. Uh, I made this bridge. This one's pretty good. I like how I've started all these sentences with I've made. Like, obviously I made them. Uh, and then this one's kind of meh. I had planned to continue on the stream. Um, so, like, these are kind of holding up this level of water. And then I never did these streams. I kind of forgot. Uh, so that's on the list. And going up this way. This was the first artificial body of water I made in this world. Uh, and it was a pain. <laughs> so I also planted some trees up here. I'm glad those grew. Uh, yeah. It's kind of funny. I will provide a printout of this world. Uh, I'll discuss that a bit more later on. But... For some reason, this body of water looks different than all the others. I don't know why. It must be because I made it myself. But I thought that was pretty interesting. So, off in that direction is the original base. Uh, and then there's a sugarcane farm down there. I mean, it's not really a farm. It's just a big pond with a bunch of sugarcane. Um, so, I'll make my way around. Actually, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, because I have another entrance. So, ooh, I hear multiple footsteps. I can't tell if it's me or mobs. So, yeah, this is where uh, I got most of my, like, original sugarcane from before I made the uh, actual sugarcane farm that you'll see. 
So I clean this up back here. I think this looks really good. Uh, you know, despite all of it being like oak planks and um, derivatives of that, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, originally, it was just like this here. And I don't know, it looked kind of dinky. So I wanted to add on a little porch. So there's a little platform here. We can walk up. Um, I'll probably still use like the ladder for jumping down, but actually I think it might be faster that way uh, than climbing up because climbing is pretty slow. And then it brings us in here. In here is a furnace array. Um, this is like my bulk smelting. So a lot of stone actually, I should take that out. And then up here is unfurnished. I don't know if I will ever do anything with this, um, but I don't know. It, it feels like there needs to be something. So maybe in the future I'll do that. Um, coming back up this way, we have our little observatory. I think this shows the sunset. Um, yes, yeah, because the stars are going down that way. So that's pretty nice. We made that early on, and then we changed like the whole design. Oh, and I put this in, uh, because this is like the only even length wall in this build. It's so funny, yeah. Placing all of these paintings, almost all of them uh, are, actually I think just all of them, aside from the one by ones and the one by twos, uh, they're all even numbers. So it's a two by two or a four by four. Um, so that worked out in this wall, but all the other ones is kind of weird. Uh, going up this way, here's just another entrance out. I made this so I could get on top because we are on a big hill here. And finally, this tree grew. Um, this looks so good. I like that. Uh, and that connects down to the secret garden underneath. So let me just show you the roofs here, because I'm pretty proud of them. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Back into this hallway. Uh, this wall is a lot of bulk items. Um, it's mainly like mob drops you can see here. Uh, and then over here are my like plants, stuff like that. This wall is a little secret garden. Uh, that tree above, the big one I was talking about, connects to this trunk here. So these are my like infinite water springs, little shrines. I thought it was cute. Uh, this was like one of the first builds I made. And then in here is the main chest room, the main storage room. Uh, this is where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, so the way I've got my items sorted, I've got like below ground stuff, so like cobble and dirt. And this is like, you know, sand, logs, clay, bricks, stuff like that. And then food, my rare stuff. And then I've got, you know, saddles, buckets. And then this chest is like, Anything that I don't want to put in a chest right now. Uh, yeah, and I come back here a lot. You'll see me uh, make my intros in this room a lot. So uh, going down here brings us out to the like main area of our base. I really like this space. I think it's really well developed. Um, it's got a nice vibe to it. You know, everywhere you're looking, there's something interesting except for the kind of bare desert. So <laughs> we'll have to do some more stuff out there. Uh, you can see a pathway leading in that direction that we'll go to in a bit. Uh, gotta think, what should I start with? Well, okay, this is my amphitheater. Um, this was the reason why I took a really long break uh, at one point in the series here. I couldn't figure out how to design it and Finally, I figured out a good one. I think this looks great. Um, but yeah, it took a really long time. So this here is actually part of our mob system. Uh, under the ground, I can't show it right now, but uh, there's a big, ooh, big mob system. Um, it's based off of one of Ethos systems. So uh, check that out <laughs> if you want. Uh, but again, this is for a very old Minecraft version. So it basically just has a bunch of water streams and then they all collect into a middle one and they go up and they fall. 
Uh, and the idea is that they are the entertainment for the people sitting in the seats here of the amphitheater. Uh, and then going in here, this is our greenhouse. Uh, this is our second part of the base. The first half is over there, and the second half is over here. So generally, like in my mind, uh, the library isn't like technically part of it. I don't know. <laughs> so these are our wheat farms. Uh, I haven't harvested them in a really long time. I don't really use wheat these days. Uh, most of the time if I get hurt, I'll just like find some pigs nearby and, you know, eat that. Um, and I don't die a whole lot these days, which is pretty good. <laughs> so uh, I keep, you know, some bread and... Where's the wheat? Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, and all that stuff. I cleaned up down here. Um, I grew grass in all of these rooms. I think that looks a little nicer. It just adds a little pop of color, not brown. I put cactus in this room, and there's like some storage chests for those. More sugar cane. I haven't put anything in here yet. And down here, yeah, I really rebuilt this room. Uh, there wasn't anything down here, I think. Last I left it, uh, this room was like only to here and this whole wall was gone. So I built this off camera because uh, I figured, you know what, it's not that big. Um, it just kind of rounds off this build. From a distance, it's really pretty. Uh, I built it on a diagonal here. So, and then these kind of staircase up. So I think that looks really nice. So now we're gonna head up and use the side door here. Uh, we're going to make our way towards the library. There's a little secret entrance into the library right here, uh, but I'll use that later, actually. First, here's this little, like, intersection area I built. Um, it's a little busy here, but I really like it. Uh, the trees, you know, there's a lot of height going on. Uh, I made this little side garden in one of the recent episodes, and I think that looks nice. And I made this waterfall in a much earlier episode. Uh, so, going this way leads to the right path I was talking about from the windmill. So let's go up here, I'll show you the view. I haven't really built anything up here, so I just threw these trees. And they actually look really good, I like this area. Uh, from the ground it's not as pretty, but I don't know, when you're up here, of course, aside from the cloud that's in the way, uh, it looks really cool. So I'll probably build like a little hut or something at some point up there, uh, but for now it'll stay like that. <laughs> so uh, we could go up onto the top floor of the library, but actually we're going to jump down right here. We've got this pond down here so that you can fall uh, and get to the main entrance of the library. So this leads back to the uh, back door and also to the mine shaft. Not sure if I'm actually going to show the mineshaft in this world tour. Uh, there's a few cool things. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I have to. Um, but it'll be quick. So heading into the main entrance, we did this in the last episode. Uh, I'm not going to look up, but aside from, you know, the bare walls above us, down here looks pretty nice. And coming in, I did a lot of work on this off screen. Um, I actually think I did the fence in here first, and that inspired me to do the fence under the bridges. Uh, and this was way more fence. This was so much. And just like doing all of the pillaring and building, it took a lot. So I think it looks really good. I did, I think, forget. Yeah, I forgot to do the signs on that bookshelf. Um, so aside from that, I think everything in here is finished. Well, not finished, because that isn't finished. Uh, we built this to celebrate 50 subs. Um, we didn't initially build it to do that, but <laughs> it kind of became that um, because it really carried us into getting 50 subs. So this is uh, a, a big achievement build. Uh, so which direction should I go first? So off in this direction, this is a little book maze that I built. On the second floor, you can see the solution to it. 
but if you want to just try to get through it, feel free. I'll just pick a path and, you know, go for it. Uh, at the end, there's not really a whole lot, but, you know, I thought it was kind of cool. There's a little reception desk here. I got to point out the little seating area there. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to do with these open areas, so there is, like, a lot of space here that I never really used. So I might also put something in here later on. Got some computers here. Very nice. And then this is a seating area. It's kind of modeled after the New York Public Library. Uh, they've got the really long tables that anybody can sit at. Um, you know, the books on the tables, little book drop-offs. I really like this room. And going through here, this leads to a stairwell up to the second floor. That's pretty nice. Um, I also, so I put in these little, um, like, rolly things. Rolly things, that's, you know, very descriptive. Ladders, I suppose. Uh, they're kind of like the ladders on wheels that are in libraries, you know, for the really tall book stacks. So you should check those out. Uh, I put, you know, like a minecart. I thought that was pretty creative. Uh, this guy here, yes, this is a skeleton spawner that's kind of in limbo. Um, at some point, this room will be converted to kind of receive this spawner, like a drop shoot. You can see I, I dug holes in the ceiling because I was planning on building it. I just never did. Uh, so this room's a bit bare. Uh, but yeah, this was actually uh, made into a workable spawner before we made this library. And then the library got so big, I just had to kind of relegate it to this little glass cube. So at some point, we'll work on that. And then we'll come down here. I also made bathrooms. I never really finished designing them, so I don't know. You can check them out if you want, but I'm not going to really uh, go into them. And then, yeah, let's go up here. Uh, I commemorated 50 subs by also putting on, um, like, all of my, you know, original subscribers. I put their names on a lot of these signs in here. So shout out to all of them. Uh, you know, thank you. Thank you very much, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually don't have a lot to talk about with this. I, I think it kind of speaks for itself. It, it was a lot of work, but ultimately it's just, just really complicated library design. Um actually haven't found a great way to incorporate this into the lore of my world yet, so I need to work on that too. And then this is towards the front entrance. Uh, and yeah, this is the little secret entrance up, so let's go there. Um, this library was initially made to house my nether portal, and then I went crazy with it. It was initially just going to be a little barn, uh, and then it turned into a library, and then I wanted it to also have a barn, so now there's a barn on top. Uh, so going up this stairwell, I wanted to show you it again. I don't know, I really like this area. It's a nice transition space. Um, I think I made good use of, you know, all the visual space I could. Uh, over here, I guess we'll actually loop around that way. So let's go up here first. Uh, and yeah, so this is like the roof of the library, or I guess the third floor if you want to consider it that. I put grass up here because, I don't know, I figure it's um, so nice and expansive. I wanted to make it kind of like a market area. Maybe put little stalls up here, but I haven't finished that yet either. I like how I keep pointing out all the things I haven't finished. I think the world is really good, and it's in a semi-finished state, um, but obviously I couldn't f do everything before this world tour. So yeah, this is the temple barn here. Um, there's its silos. Uh, those took a while. And this did too. That's the big wooden door. But the main entrance is actually on the other side. Uh, so let me show you. I'll walk around. Same kind of structure here. Sort of like a wood gazebo arch thingy. The chests I used to build um, because I know I'm going to keep building up here so I don't want to get rid of the materials yet. There's another entrance up on the third floor. And so yeah I guess this is now the fourth floor. I don't know it's kind of weird there's like different levels. 
Uh, and yeah, up and in. This is my nether portal. Uh, I guess we can pop in really quick, but I haven't built anything in the nether. Uh, it's really hostile and kind of boring in this version. So, you can see I made um, like a cobble bridge leading that way. Uh, that was so I could try to find some glowstone. It's also really hard to get glowstone in this version because it only gives you one dust. So you'll notice pretty much all of the glowstone around except the uh, stuff right over the lava has been harvested. Should get that though. I don't know why I haven't. Down the stairs and out the door. Uh, so we could either take this little doorway here or this bridge. Um, I'm going to take the bridge because I think it looks better. But uh, they do link up to the same pathway here. So also there's a little pond there. I never showed that off. Uh, and here's this view because I think this is a lot better than the backside. So yeah, let's go down. Uh, so you can actually see from my inventory, I've had to re-record this clip a few times. We're so far into the world tour that I'm not really sure um, what I've covered and what I've forgotten. So I had to kind of do a walkthrough uh, and see like where I should take you next. What I'm thinking, you can see the items in my inventory is because I've been running across the stage here. Uh, what I'm thinking is we're going to head towards the tree farm and show that off. Uh, it's not terribly exciting. You know, it's just a big stone platform with trees on it. Uh, and it's not the most efficient design either. Turns out um, these oak trees have a lot more tolerance for growing closer together. I knew that was the case in future versions, but I just wasn't sure in this one. Uh, so I think for my next tree farm, because I'll definitely make another one, uh, we'll make these trees a lot closer together. So I also think I'm going to put like a ceiling on them. Um, that was a suggestion from one of my viewers. I can't remember who, unfortunately. But it's really unfortunate. I have a Discord, and there's only like four or five really active people in there. But I can't remember which of those five people um, said the good things that they did. So thank you to all of them. And thank you to um, even the non-active people on my Discord. Uh, but yeah, this is the tree farm. Pretty boring, pretty basic. Uh, just a bunch of slabs and glass and cobble. But it's pretty nice. Uh, we get about, I think, like somewhere between seven and ten stacks every time we harvest it um, and that's where we kind of store extra stuff oh i did want to come over here so i was cleaning up the area behind the tree farm and because there was just a bunch of like random trees that um, just had leaves and no logs and so i was like oh let me clean up these leaves and make this area look a little nicer and so I went to do a controlled burn, and um, it quickly went out of control. Uh, you actually might see some saplings. Yeah, because I didn't finish growing them all. Uh, but I was going to do a burn right here, and I did. And then it quickly spread to this hill and all the way like over there. So thankfully, it didn't get to our tree farm or like the rest of the surrounding forest because it could have been so much worse than it was uh it got like all the way over here so this is the small button sized quote unquote lake um right by our base and the tree farm is right over there uh, i just wanted to point this out because we're actually going to run off that way um for lighthouse number two two i believe uh and also i feel like this is a pretty important spot in our world despite the fact that we haven't done any actual building here i've mentioned this little lake pond so many times um so it's kind of pivotal i think i acknowledged it like the first time we moved over here uh, so that's pretty cool so yeah we're gonna head off this direction um i've got a small trail of torches leading to each of the lighthouses uh, so that you can find them on foot at night. So if you're planning on going to the lighthouses, which I suggest you do, uh, look out for those torches. So I'm probably not going to head inside, uh, but I figured I would at least do a drive-by of this lighthouse. Uh, the interior is very similar to the first one that I showed you, 
and also there's some stuff inside that I don't want to spoil, so uh, just a, a quick look-see. I actually can't remember if this is lighthouse number two or three. And it is number two. Okay, I was right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is how it looks. It's pretty far away. It is quite a trek. Um, so again, there's lights kind of along the way. You can only really see them at nighttime, uh, but that should be enough to get you here. And also, again, you'll have a map of my world, so that should make it a lot easier to uh, explore. From Lighthouse 2, I did this big loop around uh, to find us at our old base here. We actually came from the back, but I ran around towards the front uh, to give you this view. I threw a little stone tower on the top, like very, very little one, uh, to make it a little more easily identifiable uh, from the map view. But yeah, this is it. It's pretty boring. I'm really glad we didn't end up settling here. Like, it's got some potential. Uh, but where we're at right now just looks so much better. The hills, everything, all the weird landscape just really brings it together. Uh, so we're going to head off back towards our base. We're going to go near the front and then go into the desert, show you that little ruined area. All right. Uh, so I cleaned this up a little bit in the last episode, I believe. And then in between episodes, I think is when I made this pathway. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't include any mossy cobble. I was gonna put some in, but while I was refurbishing everything, I figured I might need all the mossy cobble I had, uh, so I didn't want to waste any. At some point, I'll throw some into these pathways, but like this one over here is really long. So I don't know, I'm gonna need to stockpile a lot more mossy cobble. Uh, also, I'm going to show this view. I'm really proud of it. Okay, and I fell off. <laughs> well, uh, let me some wonder. Yeah, I, I'm really proud of this view. I think we'll want to put something over there visually. Um, but like, man, what a, what a great little mountain range. And like clearly inhabited by, uh, you know, somebody who wanted to build on it. Also, yes, uh, so I didn't build this bridge. So there are two things I forgot. That one bridge near our spawn, that's a weird pronunciation, uh, and then this bridge here. I, I was just lazy, but definitely it's not gonna stay as this dirt bridge. Uh, you can see that pathway kind of led off to that little bit of land there, uh, and then it connects over here. So I'm gonna build something in between later. <laughs> Uh, also, for this pathway, I wanted to put in some grass near the front here, so it kind of looks like, you know, as you get closer to the coast, there's more vegetation and mossy cobble, uh, but I did neither, so that's later on. Uh, and now we'll head up this pathway. I was going to do two, like one going this side of this hill and one going on the other side, uh, but I realized as I was walking the other side, you really have to go out of your way to want to walk around that way. Uh, so this one just worked out better. Also, you know, I think it frames this kind of reveal here with the ruins. Also, what a great view. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I built these ruins pretty recently uh, for those who haven't seen that episode. And I haven't done basically anything over here since then. Uh, I covered this ground with a little more dirt, because this is also where we harvest our sand from. Uh, so you can <laughs> notice it's like three or four box lower here. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to make it look like, you know, the rock is dirt. <laughs> so walking around, um, there's a little barrier here. I need to build this up, put some supports, because this is just like sand. Um, but then it wraps around and up towards the main ruins here. There are like small things kind of scattered around, but this is like the big one. Uh, I've said it before, it's kind of modeled after the Parthenon. Um, is it the Parthenon in Athens? Uh, I think that is it, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't intentionally modeled after it, but this whole area kind of ended up being like that. Um, and then we'll head off to... Ooh. Nice. 
uh, and then we'll head off towards the lighthouse. So I know all these lighthouses are practically the exact same, um, but I think this one is my favorite. The one near the spawn tower was my favorite because it was the one I made first, uh, but this is the one I see the most potential in. It's right in the middle of this river here, like on a little island there, and I think that's really cool. Uh, but the land to either side of this river is also wrought with potential. Um, it looks really nice off in that direction, so I think we'll build something big eventually over there. And then on the other side of this river is a big ocean. I think it looks just so good. It's a great spot. Um, let me see if I can actually get over there. Ooh. Um, this is also the one I think I did the most interior on. So again, I'm not going to go in, but you should check it out. Yeah, look at this. This is just, oh, and a pumpkin. I never noticed that. Uh, but yeah, great view. So I'm looking over my checklist, and it seems like we've covered most of everything in the world here. Uh, it's pretty surprising. I thought I had a lot more, but the ending really snuck up on me. Uh, I'm going to double check, and we're going to go down and loop through the giant tunnel that goes to our mine that you haven't seen. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I was really worried that this was going to go over 90 minutes. Um, but as it is, it seems like we're going to be just over an hour for this world tour, which is pretty good. I wanted it longer than a regular video, but not too long. Also, I wanted to point this out. So I was going to finish this for the world tour, uh, and you'll notice it's actually almost done. It's really surprising. Like this whole spot is clean, and then there's this destruction, um, but that actually clears up really quickly. So kind of considering if I should just cut this recording and then, you know, clean this up and then re-record like it was always like this uh or always you know finished but i don't think i'm gonna do that i doubt like anybody's gonna really run through here and if they do it'll be once i don't think they're gonna critique all that hard um but yeah down here it looks really good i'm still not sure what i'm gonna do with this area i think eventually we'll build something in the desert and then this will just be our kind of connection between the base and the desert base I need to also get away from just calling it the base because eventually we will move on um, in accordance with, you know, the, the theme for this whole series. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I honestly am not sure if I have anything else to add. I covered the point system, triple chests. Uh, you'll find those. I think there are under a stack. So at the very least, um, there's fewer than 64 points to collect. Um, but I don't have much advice other than that. Just kind of look around in important areas, important areas in each episode or just, you know, in the world. You'll probably know where to look. Um, and look out for some signs. Uh, I did place a few signs for lore and stuff. That's why I've got this one on me. Uh, they There's not a whole lot of lore, I feel like I overhyped some of my lore a bit. This, so far, this world does not have a whole lot in it. Um, I think episode 100, that world tour, will involve a lot more lore. Uh, but until then, you know, I'm sorry if I might have overhyped all of the lore and such. Um, I really, I just was excited for you guys to see this world. Uh, and I really do hope that you download it. Before I keep going on, that's like the main mine shaft these days. Uh, all these other pathways kind of go into weird chunks that I don't want to mine in. Um, and this is where I keep all of my resources. This side is for like cobble and stuff. There's redstone over there. I think more redstone in here. Yeah. <laughs> and then a furnace array. Uh, and that's pretty much it down here. It's another mine, but I've covered all of these holes. And it leads right back up to the surface. Uh, so, yes, I, I implore you to explore the world. 
Um, but don't get frustrated if you're not finding a whole lot of lore signs and stuff like that. I think there are fewer than like 20 of those, so keep an eye out, but it's not your main goal. Uh, your main goal should really just to be appreciate this world, because I spend a lot of time in it, and I want you to appreciate it as eye candy, if nothing else. And finally, we find ourselves at home. Uh, there were a few things I wanted to mention while I was rambling down in the mine there. Uh, as far as it goes with releasing this world, there are a few things I'm going to give you. Obviously, the world download, one. That's the big thing. Uh, two, I'm going to release some of my texture packs. I'll release the texture pack that has this inventory and my skin. Uh, I'll release another texture pack that's kind of like see-through leaves. Um, another one that's kind of like see-through the ground. Another one that makes clay red. Just various things that I use in the series here. Uh, also, I will be giving a printout of my world here. Um, that'll be a big picture using the Cartograph app. That's a really old app for printing out alpha worlds. Uh, so I, I think you should probably reference that if you're going to explore my world a lot, because um, it shows, it'll have labels on it where everything is, and it'll kind of tell you where to go. And then finally, I will release, release, quote unquote, uh, the link for my Discord. Feel free to join that. I'm not really like plugging social media and stuff like that, uh, but we do have probably like 20 people on that Discord, uh, and it's fairly active. You know, we discussed this series, uh, old Minecraft in general, kind of cool stuff if you're into old Minecraft. So feel free to check it out. With all of that said, um, I believe that is the end of the world tour here. This also marks the end of Alpha for this series. Next episode, we will be in Beta 1.0. Very bittersweet. I really love Alpha. At some point in the future, we might do kind of like a reprisal um, to cover the versions of Alpha and like InDev, InfDev that I didn't cover in this series. But yeah, I think we are going to move on to Beta 1.0 for um, episode 51. As such, I really hope you enjoy. Um, thank you very much for watching, uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.